Okay. Thank you all. Uh, welcome to the April 18th meeting of the Yellow Springs Village Council. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. Kausch? Yes. Sims? Here. McQueen? Yes. Kempfling? Yes. Also present is Assistant Village Manager Melissa Van Zant, Chief of Police Dave Hale, Village Solicitor Chris Connor. Patty Bates is in Hawaii at present. Uh, she oh, may be on a plane on her way back. Oh, Who true. knows? And, and also present in the far back corner, De Denise Swinger, uh, Zoning Administrator. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have announcements? Um, I will. I will start with one. Uh, in the packet, we had a uh, document about shred it. So, speaking of documents, shred it is a document shredding day. So, this Saturday, uh, April twenty third, from ten in the morning till one in the afternoon, um, we are bringing the, sh the chamber is bringing the shred it truck in. So, they are an official. Um, designated document shredder. So what will be done um, according to all of the requirements for confidentiality, um, you can stay and watch your papers be shredded or you can <laughs> entrust it to us and leave them there. Um, it will be in the parking lot at Limestone and Quarry, so along the side of the Children's Center. Um, there will be an entrance and an exit marked, so please look for those signs. And in addition to documents, we're also accepting electronics, thanks to Antioch College. And the important thing to note about the, uh, the electronics is that Antioch College actually gets paid by, a, um, by someone who will come and pick those up. So you're benefiting Antioch College if you bring your old electronics there. So, and, and we'll also take batteries, too. Okay. Well, and that's Earth Day being celebrated. That's, it's, well, it, it's, it's part of the Greenfest, mm -hmm. um, Glen Helen Greenfest. Mm -hmm. And the Environmental Commission, uh, Community <laughs> Solutions, and the Yellow Springs Resilience Network will all have booths at that Glen Helen Earth Day event right. in the parking lot. Uh, but that is actually across the street in the in Glen the lot. in the in Glen, the Glen parking, parking lot. So, lot. so yeah. all of the other Green Fest events are happening on at the Glen Helen parking lot on Cory. Shredded is the only event that's happening, um, and in the other parking lot on Limestone, we just thought access would be easier mm -hmm. for folks. How early does it start? Uh, I think that the event started about 10. 10. And, and it goes until 5. Right. And uh, yeah, Greenfest, uh, the Resilience Network is going to be highlighting Transportation Month, which is May. Um, and that's also uh, Bike Month. And I did want to say uh, we did have our official opening day for trails. So I wanted to thank the uh, Yellow Springs Police Department and the Miami Township Fire and Rescue for uh, participating in that. and. Uh, we didn't have a ton of kids, but I thought it was a lot of fun. There were a lot of people out on Saturday. Um, and uh, actually, I'm going to be giving a talk at 1 o'clock at the Green Fest about Rails to Trails. Um, I also wanted to mention this Sunday, uh, the Resilience Network is also sponsoring a film. It's called Small, Small Farm Rising. That's going to be at 4 o'clock at the Little Art Theater. Uh, pretty amazing stuff going on with small farms. and and uh, how to kind of change the ethic of, of farming. Um, and uh, that's all I had. Okay, anybody else? Okay, um, next on the agenda is the consent agenda. Uh, we have the minutes of the April 4th meeting and um, the financials for March that were prepared by Melissa. Um, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, next are petitions, well, a review of the agenda. Um, this agenda does have an exec, we actually are going to be adding an executive session for the discussion of real estate. I, I did have a question on the landfill power um, that <clears throat> we discussed this at the Energy Board, and I know there's some kind of a time frame on this. Do we need to make a decision tonight on this? Um, boy, I, that's the first I've seen it. I, I didn't know anything about it. So, I mean, I don't know what the decision is, and without okay. Patty, I thought, I'm not. I, I thought it was by the end of May we needed to pass an ordinance or something. Wow. Like if we went okay, well, um, why don't we just add it? Um, um, we'll just add it to new business and just maybe say a couple of words yeah, about it, and just I, so I, that we get it into the record. Um, and what is it? It's um, it's it's the it's um, this EDI Brown County landfill power. Okay. And 
uh, I know Patty and Johnny recommended or okay. that we should try to add this to our portfolio. Okay, cool. To take the place of the gas that we're losing. Okay, good. I just know there's some kind of a time frame on it. I okay. And that's probably something uh, that we could potentially pass as an emergency. So I, I added that to new business, and we'll just keep that short okay. since we don't know much. Um, anything else anybody wants to add to the agenda or change? Uh, so, uh, Brian, would you review the um, Petition petitions? Communications? Yeah, we did have a few. Um, so first of all, we uh, have the mayor's monthly report, uh, business as usual. Uh, we also had a recommendation from, uh, actually it was, it was written to us from Sergeant Penrod, but it also seemed to have the endorsement of the other officers to uh, put two stop signs at uh, East South College um, because there's a lot of traffic now with the Wellness Center. And um, we got one letter that was in the packet from Liz Porter about um, the village uh, being more actively uh, uh, supportive of alleys in the village and working on that and also we had three more at the table from uh, Lisa Russell, uh, Anna Marie uh, Eberhardt and Dr. Pascal Hitzler and um, Parker Buckley and Carol Young all uh, supporting the idea that the village should take a more active role with our alleyways. So I, I, I don't I suppose we don't want to discuss it at, at this meeting, but I did appreciate those letters and I would like to have that on let's let's ask it for especially when Patty's here, ask Council it for agenda. a future agenda. And and as Chief, well as the uh, stop sign. Right, yeah. So Chief, is that something that you're that you're prepared to address tonight or will we just talk about it later? If, if we would like I could yes. Well let's let's put it on it on the next month's agenda or next meeting's agenda. Okay, um, is that it? It looks like that's it. Yep. Okay, we'll move on to public hearings and legislation. First, we have resolution 2016-25. Um, um, it's very long, so what? Uh, we'll just read it by title only, and then um, Judith and or Marianne will will do the descriptors. Establish resolution 2016-25 establishing a justice system task force for the village of Yellow Springs. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Judith and or Marianne. Well, we've been talking about this the last few meetings, and mm -hmm. basically we just put into the resolution everything that was put into the discussion piece um, about the task force. And um, I don't know if there's any questions. It's Council or citizens? Do you have, um, I didn't notice that this had any kind of a, of a time frame. Do you relate it to start and finish? And I mean, are you, finish may be more difficult. What are you thinking about as far as starting? And Well, as soon as this, um, as, as soon as this passed, I would like to see uh, an ad put in the paper, um, you, know, you know, looking for, uh, citizens who are interested in participating on the task force and uh, Marianne and I and that'll be interviewing them just the way we do with every other mm -hmm. commission or task force and as quickly as we can see for the committee we will I must I know under the um, under our goals we had said two years mm -hmm. maybe we said or we said 216 to 218 okay um, I'm just thinking that with as as much as this has been um, in the in the public eye that maybe one of you would write a letter to the editor or just do a joint letter to the editor that that would probably go a long way to um, explaining to people what we're doing and asking for um, volunteers okay sounds good um, any questions or comments from uh, from council members about the task force well, the only other thing I wondered is, do we need to have language, uh, it's kind of related to timeline, that, that talks about this being sort of a discrete group that, you know, it's, it's got a specific purpose and then it's... From the standpoint of the members, they might appreciate knowing that, um, that this is... That a, that we're look, well, you know, we're saying 216 to 218. But if you're thinking, I mean, I'm not sure if it would be... The full, you know, we're, it's going to be at least six months before 
before it really gets started. Um, I would hope it wouldn't take that long, personally. I would think well, not six months from now. I meant six months into 2016 That's before right. it gets started, really. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you want to just say approximately two, year. two years or something. Um, you know, you to want be that in the, Are you saying? I think. It in the resolution? Um, I don't know if we should distinguish. You know, just from a, a, a commission or something, since I this is. So but it's. But I think it's because it's called a task force, and it's in our in our rules. It talks about task forces being um, single, kind oh, of I mean, single we purpose. Can make that, we can just say that. In you could you could add if you wanted a section that said something like the usefulness or duration of the task force will be reviewed in X years or mm -hmm. X months in and then that leaves you the latitude to revisit it. Good point. I think that's a good idea. Hmm. So what that's section six? I mean I would think we would we're getting started at, like you say in the middle of the year. Um, Maybe something years. like the task force is expected to last approximately two years and um, the time frame will be revisited or something Sounds good. are you can you craft something Judy? yes 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 okay um, any comments or questions from citizens okay seeing and hearing none I'll bring it back to council table all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. okay uh, next is uh, ordinance 2016-03 it's a second reading all right, this is repealing old section 1260.04 uses of chapter 1260 general provisions of title 4 zoning of part 12 planning and zoning of the codified ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio and enacting new section 1260.04 uses. Thank you. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, I see our planning uh, oh, yes. coordinator is up yeah. here. Thank goodness um, to explain first, this. The 216 um, 2016 has to do with uh, several ordinances that are following it impacts those under uses accessory buildings and structures um, including the placement of driveways that was there wasn't anything in the code relating to that um, some swimming pool language both exempted and permitted um, and that's basically uh, for health and safety um, and it also um, deletes the required rear yard language um, which was um, a bit confusing it increases the percent and size of accessory structures to be consistent, consistent with accessory dwelling units. That's it. Okay. Any comments or questions from council? This is the second reading. I will open the public hearing for public comment. Seeing and hearing none, I'll bring it back to council table. Judy, would you please call the vote? Yes. Housh. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Hempling. Yes. Sims. Yes. Wintrow. Yes. Okay, next is 2016-04. This is repealing <clears throat> old section 1262.08, specific requirements of chapter 1262 conditional use requirements of title four zoning of part 12 planning and zoning of the codified ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio and enacting new section 1262.08 specific requirements. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion please? So moved. Second. Denise. Okay, this ordinance um, is the one that keeps the size of accessory dwelling units consistent with accessory structures and also adds RC for home occupations in accessory dwelling units. For some reason, um, RA um, and RB was in there, but not RC, and I think it was just an oversight. Okay. Uh, this is a, any comments or questions from council? This is a second reading. I will open the public hearing for comment. Seeing and hearing none, I'll bring it back to council table. Judy? Yes. Humphling? Yes. Sims? Yes. Housh? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. Okay, 05. This is repealing old section 1258.01 district uses of chapter 1258 schedule of district uses of title 4 zoning of part 12 planning and zoning of the codified ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio and enacting new section 1258.01 district uses. Thank you. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Denise? Uh, this um, adds private swimming pools and spas uh, to our zoning code. Um, currently, the Greene County Combined Health District uh, monitors public pools, but not private pools. And this is specific to uh, public health and safety, um, just making sure that the, there's either a fence enclosure or in the case of a spa, there's a locked um, cover or heavy cover so um, children can wander into the yard and something could 
catastrophic could happen, um, as well as uh, mm -hmm. uh, people who aren't maintaining the pools. Uh, they don't become a breeding ground for mosquitoes and other insects. Thank you. Any comments or questions from council? I'll open the public hearing. I'll bring it back to council table. Judy? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Sims? Yes. Housh? Yes. Hempfling? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. Finally, 07. 06? 06. Okay. 06. <laughs> They do start to look alike. <clears throat> yeah. Repealing old section 1470.02 definitions of chapter 1470. Public nuisances of title four miscellaneous building regulations of part 14 building and housing of the codified ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio and enacting new section 1470.02 definitions. Can I have a motion please? So moved. I move. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Denise. Um, sorry, wait a minute. You said 216.06 definitions? 2016-06, yes, of chapter 1470.02 definitions. <clears throat> okay, um, adds pr okay, so that's going to add the definition of private pools and spots. <laughs> but we still have one more then. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Okay, any uh, comments or questions from council? I'll open the public hearing. Seeing and hearing no comments, I'll bring it back to council table. Judy? Yes, Sims? Yes. Housh? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Hempling? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. Okay, now we have 07 this time. Here it is. This is repealing old section 1284.08 definitions, RS of chapter 1284 definitions of Title IV zoning of Part 12 planning and zoning of the codified ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, and enacting new section 1284.08 definitions. Okay. Um, can okay. I have a motion, okay, please? I got that what? mixed up because you said definitions. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, can I have a motion, please? I move. Second. Okay, Denise. I apologize. When she said definitions, I was clarifying that. Um, the other one was on public nuisance, which right. added the T to the added. Language, So you knew that. Okay. All right. And then this one adds it into the definitions, RS. Okay. Um, comments or questions? I will open the public hearing. Uh, seeing none, I will um, ask Judy to call the roll. Yes, Hempfling. Yes. Ouch. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Sims. Yes. Wintrow. Yes. Thank you very much. Planning Commission will be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank Please visit this anymore. Yeah, good work on that. Thanks. Um, okay, and then finally, our last piece of legislation is a second reading and public hearing of Ordinance 2016 08. Yes. By title right. only? Yes. This is repealing old section 1042.01 electric service charges of chapter 1042 electricity, municipal light and power of title four public utilities of part 10 streets, utilities and public services code of the codified ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio and enacting new section 1041.01 electric service charges with a new rate structure. Thank you. Can I have a motion please? So move. Second. Okay. Um, Melissa, this is mm -hmm. uh, your handiwork along with uh, um, John Courtney. Courtney, so if you could uh, explain, <clears throat> review it with us. So John Courtney did a uh, electric rate and cost of service study and he looked at our entire rate structure and he had made some recommendations in order to change our rate structure from a tiered structure where if you used more power you were getting a cheaper rate to a flat rate structure where everyone's paying the same amount per kilowatt hour. And um, the rates had not been adjusted since the late 80s, so this was long overdue. Um, so this is uh, going to go ahead and put everybody on that flat rate and just update uh, the entire rate structure as a whole. So I think that that's. Are about there any it. other? Are there any other? Um, the customer charges. Anything else changing? Yes, there is going to be. Right now, we have what's called a readiness for service charge, and it comes with a hundred free. Well, not free, but it comes with a hundred kilowatt hours folded into that charge. So instead of a readiness for service charge we would now have a customer charge which would be a flat ten dollars and it would not include the first hundred kilowatt hours anymore so and but i think it's important to note that that there is currently a minimum monthly charge yes. so that is actually not a new um a new charge on the bill it's just no. changing the name and and making it a little bit more um descriptive of what it's actually for but there is a provision in the legislation that it will go up by a dollar annually. Every year. Every year. 
for five years, I think. For five years, right? Yes. Um, questions or comments from council? <clears throat> I will open the public hearing for comments from citizens. Seeing and hearing none, I will bring it back to the council table. And I do feel like we, we had a, a good discussion at the last meeting, so I do feel like this has been discussed and considered, even though we've been pretty quiet about it tonight. But, but I think we also agreed it would take in, into effect uh, uh, July, July 1. Mm -hmm. one. Right. Uh, Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Sims? Yes. Housh? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Hempfling? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. Okay. Um, now is the time in the agenda where we hear from citizens about items that are not on the agenda. Uh, we ask that you come to the podium, uh, give your name, and you have three minutes to speak. Tim Barhorse from Springs Ned. Uh, I just wanted to uh, reiterate uh, the invitation from Springs Net to council and staff for this Friday, April 22nd, for a short, brief presentation by Jeff Duma of OFS Optics. He uh, has uh, been the contractor for the Sandy, Oregon fiber installation and several other uh, municipalities. So uh, in case you missed the email, just wanted to mention it. Uh, and I just wanted to mention one other uh, news item that we thought was relevant. Um, the city of Fairlawn, Ohio, has decided to implement and build out a fiber to the home network. They passed an ordinance on April 4th, and I'll be brief and just quote their mayor. Uh, they call it Fairlawn Gig. We'll deliver a faster, better, and different internet service from a trusted local provider, and will significantly aid in our efforts to promote, promote economic development and commercial and residential growth in the city of Fairlawn. That was from Mayor Bill Roth. And that's all. Tim, can you just highlight the time and location for Friday? Yes, I'm record? sorry. It's 4 p.m. Friday afternoon at Maveca, in case you missed the email. And, and, and Chris, can you please, it would be my understanding that, that as many council members as want can go to this presentation as long as we don't deliberate during the meeting. Correct. You certainly can listen, you can ask questions, but you can't discuss any outcomes. And, and can you give the a location of Mabeka? Um, I'm right by the high school. The it's, right old, it's, in the, the it's in the, the big brown the building. In the, the Morgan building, it's called, yeah. next and to the high school. Yeah. Is, the, is there a door on the side? Is Their it, door is right on the side as you pull into the main driveway. It's right on the right. Yeah, not where it's, the soccer fields are, but where, where you enter at the parking lot. Oh, it is. They changed it then. Okay. Yeah. It used to be on the other side. Right, so okay. you need to go, same, same door as the Same ESC. door as ESC, okay. Thank you. That's good to know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other <clears throat> citizen comments or concerns? Okay, um, we'll move on. Next we've got a uh, special report of the Arts and Culture Commission, uh, their annual report to council. Quite nice, quite nicely presented, so it will be good to hear from and I see John's color coordinated with mm -hmm. the report. Yes, Hello, everyone. <coughs> I'm John Fleming. I've lived here 21 years, and I am the chair of the um, former Public Art Commission, now called the Arts and Culture Commission. And uh, this excellent document was uh, created by Jamie Sharp, and she's not here right now, but I'd like to thank her publicly for doing that. Um, the Arts and Culture Commission is um, a very active commission. Um, one of the activities that we have been primarily involved in this year <coughs> is the Vita Award, which is a Village Inspiration and Design Award. That's a really nice thing to be involved in because uh, it makes people happy to get it. <laughs> and um, thus far, the three winners uh, have received uh, uh, the have received the award for something a project that they did and it was not their intent in starting the project to receive an award, <laughs> or even in that, particularly, I think, for the most part, even for private profit. But nonetheless, they did, in uh, the commission's estimation, deserve to receive this award. Um, <coughs> and one of the challenges of this commission, I think, is that in addition to deciding who gets the award, the commission members 
that it's, uh, it's attached to a public event. So commission members have to plan the event, they have to schedule the event, they have to create a ceremony that goes along with the event. And I think we're finding it increasingly the case that we have to have a reception that goes along with it just because people expect that. So um, those have been really great things to do and um, we expect to have more of those in, in the future. This past year saw a, also a public event that was connected to the skate park. Uh, and that was headed up by a commission member who's not here today, uh, A.J. Warren. I think one of the nice things about the commission right now is that it's kind of equally divided up with both in terms of gender and in terms of generations. So uh, the skate park is not something that me, uh, and I'm not a skater, but A.J. is, and so he really headed that up with help from a lot of other people. And that was a really fun event. Again, that was an all-day event that coincided with um, the street fair last year. One uh, of our challenges, I think, is to first of all keep our membership up because because there is this because there is, there is this promotional and um, contingent to the Vita Award and other events. We have to we have we operate best when we're at full membership. Right now there are two vacancies, so that it doesn't become too much of a burden for any one single person to do all of this. So I think one of our goals for this year is to kind of reach full membership of the commission. The other another goal is that um, although we've been getting really good press and from the Yellow Springs news I think uh, most people don't really know about the Vita Award. That's my intuition. So we're um, trying to develop strategies to get the word out about what that is and also to have more people nominate. Um, I know Susan nom made a nomination, but really we haven't had a, um, a lot of nominations. So we're trying to get the word about that and you know <laughs> word of mouth is always the best way to get things out. So um, we've decided to not, when there was a question about whether to give the award on a quarterly or seasonal basis or whether to give it when it seemed right. So that's under, that's under discussion like that. Um, we started the process of reopening the um, the John Bryan Gallery, which is out there, Melissa Van Zant and myself and uh, Jamie Sharp met in subcommittee to kind of develop stuff. And uh, Jamie Sharp took, has taken a lead role in developing guidelines and policies in terms of that. And I think that that will happen. Um, again, you know, these things happen when we have when we have a better because that, that also involves the curating, in addition to policy. So, um, but that will happen, you know, before the end of the year. This, this, this gallery will be open. This community gallery be, will be reopened and, um, and with guidelines and, um, and strategies for uh, presenting art here in this building. One thing I forgot to mention about the Vita Award is that we're also trying to streamline the nomination process so that it's easy. Right now it's not uh, even, right now it's not too easy to nominate someone. You have to kind of go into the website and look for it. So we're hoping that that becomes a really simple process that someone can go to the website, boom, there it is, boom, and they do it and stuff like that. So, so that's, you know, that's our tasks for the next uh, f few uh, months to, to do that. Um, do you all have any questions? about the ACC. You guys are doing a good job. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, one thing I'd like to add in closing um, is that the musician's uh, agreement, um, and you all know what I'm talking about, right? Um, that was based on our surveys of other cities, in particular um, New York City, of which the musician's agreement is 13 pages long. Uh, Portland, Oregon, which is one that we found very useful, um, and also Asheville, North Carolina, another one that found that was found useful. One difference is those agreements were about space. Okay, in other words, 
the people who, the agreement was how long you can occupy the best space on the street to make the most money. Okay, one thing that the Yellow Springs Agreement is about, although it's based on those, it's not about making money in that space, but it's, it's about more like, uh, if I, I just use the word nuisance, okay, people complain that, you know, it was going on too long. People, I mean people, I mean citizens, I don't mean people who were visiting for the day. So that's a significant difference between uh, Yellow Springs, as far as I can tell, and other towns that, you know, um, it's about, you know, moving things around so that one type of music is not heard all day in one location. And I think that's an important point to make um, when talking about the musicians' agreement. Chief, um, have, have we been getting calls? Have you been, we haven't, have you been getting calls? <laughs> Has the PD been getting calls? Um, there was a, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, one or two in particular, it has more to do with volume often than any type of music, too loud things, et cetera. So, um, I, have, you know, I think we did much better with people being able to move around the musicians than what I understand it was in the past, but we still have some volume calls, so. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and the sidewalks are remaining open. I, I haven't seen um, Joseph lately, but the sidewalks are staying open and people aren't blocking, okay. Yes. Okay. And I haven't heard any, I, I had one question from a, from a business who just all of a sudden had um, they had a bench and people, somebody was starting to play on their bench and I think that it was a surprise and you know wasn't sure how to handle it. So Alex from our office has been handing out the agreements and um, so hopefully that will continue to work. I think it's 90 minutes. I don't have it in front of me. But I, I thought think it was it's two hours. Uh, two hours a, p a person is supposed to move. It's 60 minutes. 60, 60 minutes, yeah, really? 90, wow. Yeah. A, a person is supposed to and move. And you're supposed to take a break or move. And that came out of a citizen concern that I think had 42 signatures that were gathered in one day from mostly people who uh, owned or worked in businesses downtown. So, I mean, it's a small town. It's kind of personal, but that's the way it is. Right. Yeah, uh, great work. I just wanted to highlight two things. One is uh, something I'm really impressed with, with the, the documents about the gallery as a focus on education uh, with the art. And I think that's really important and fits with the village. And, uh, and I appreciate Melissa working closely on that. And then the second thing is the next event, uh, which is slated for April 30th, which is uh, for the skate park to continue the fundraising effort to build that bowl that you see on that diagram uh, up on the screen. Okay, great. Thanks, John. Thanks, Thanks John. Well. Okay, uh, next, um, Old Businesses Council Goals Timeline, and um, I thought we discussed that at the retreat, but it, I, I, maybe this was about bringing it to citizens. I, you know, I'm not sure. I thought I had more notes on here, but my recollection is, is that things that haven't actually already started, um, somebody has taken on responsibility for, for beginning the discussion, for doing some exploration. So I'm not sure who asked for this to be put on the agenda, but what did you, what did you want to review as far as the goals timeline? Was it you, Judith, oh, I think? It was Brian. It was Brian. Oh. Well, I think the main thing was what you said was it was really just letting citizens know that we do have uh, action plans or action items for each of the goals, uh, which I think is great because uh, last year I don't think we took the time to go through and really think about how we were going to uh, operationalize each of these. Um, so I don't know that we need to... Well, I mean, actually, I can go through it really yeah. quickly. Um, the water projects are obviously ongoing. Um, we're still looking to begin construction. We're in design, um, creating design documents or construction documents now and looking to begin in construction in July. Um, create an economic sustainability, a sustainable economic development strategy to support existing businesses and entrepreneurs and attract new opportunities. Um, the, the work that has been has been talked about is ongoing with the Economic Sustainability Commission. So that is really there wasn't a specific task. That is their ongoing work. Um, develop strategy for fiscal sustainability. 
um, that is really work that, that our finance director is doing on a, on a daily basis. Um, that's the essence of her job. Um, one of the things that, um, and, and she's working on bringing some things uh, to us related to revenue options, and um, we're also in discussion on a couple of situations on publicly owned property. So I think that we will be discussing not only uses, but potentially, um, you know, policies of where funds will go if we, if we do um, sell publicly owned property. Um, strategy for sidewalk repairs and new construction. Um, my recollection is that Marianne and Jerry um, have taken on doing kind of beginning a discussion of that with Patty, looking at um, uh, some of the work that's been done and kind of setting a plan for how we'll move forward on that. Um, good thing is obviously people can see that the the, the uh, streetscape is uh, going along the completion of the Xenia Avenue streetscape is going along quite quickly and the other good thing is that when that project is done Jason is going to be um, bringing a contractor in to do smaller repair projects he's surveying town and will be um, doing spot projects that are that are extremely egregious with you know large um, large uh, distances between the two uh, slabs of concrete. Um, work with community organizations, commissions, and staff to develop a plan to reduce energy use and increase environmental sustainability. I would say the same thing that Environmental Commission and Energy Board, that's their work, and, and along with the Resilience Network, the input of the Resilience Network. So that's an ongoing process. And the solar project, do we have a do we have a schedule on the solar project, or is that's just in contract negotiations now? Is that? I don't know what the con what the. Uh, Melissa, do you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not I'm certain. Just by the end of the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, next is explore development of a municipally owned fiber optic network, and that again is ongoing. We have scheduled a work session with SpringsNet. Um, that will happen on June eighth. In, I, I think, I'm not sure if we've decided whether it will be in council chambers or the meeting room A and B. Um, it will be at 7 o'clock on June 8th. So that will be a council meeting. Essentially, I think we're, the plan is to invite, um, uh, all, we're, we're going to talk about that later in the, in the agenda. Um, Village justice, justice System Review and Update. We just passed the kind of went to the first step tonight in passing the legislation to get that uh, task force started. And next is develop a master plan for the glass farm to include mixed income housing, a solar array, and a wetland area. And um, that's moving forward also is certainly the, the um, solar array and wetland area are moving forward as um, Environmental Commission and Tecumseh Land Trust work on the, uh, especially the wetland area, and I expect that we will be moving forward on the housing piece of it quickly, too. Yeah, we had, uh, I had talked to Patty. Well, <coughs> Judith and I have met and talked. I've also met with Emily Seibel, um, but Patty Bates wanted to wait until uh, sometime in the summer mm -hmm. okay. where staff was a little more freed up before we started scheduling a mm -hmm. process. And one other thing that uh, back to village owned land, uh, we did say that we were going to uh, oh, a uh, survey, sur yeah, right. a survey, and and really drill down on what are the potential uh, right. uses and, and that sort of thing. Right, and I think my recollection was that Jerry and, and Patty were going to work on that and just you know coming up with a spreadsheet first of all of what all the parcels are, and then secondly, you know, are they developable? Are they not? You know, what what the status is? Why we have them and and those kinds of things. So that'll actually be good because you know there are, there are village owned land that I'm sure I don't even know we have. So it'll be good to have that in a document. So, um, okay, any other comments or questions? Okay. Um, the, next <clears throat> the next agenda item is commission membership process, and that was, I knew that there were, uh, Judy and I talked about it in, in agenda planning, Marianne, and she said you had a number of things you wanted to bring forward. That seemed like the easiest thing to say, so, and we did have a lot of information in the, uh, in the packet, so why don't you go ahead with that? Yeah, well, um, Brian and I, what, a 
last year, I guess mostly, worked on up, trying to standardize the uh, legislation for all the commissions, as well as uh, created a document called, I think, Roles and Responsibilities. <clears throat> Since then, um, there are a few things within those documents that I think need to be tweaked, but the other thing is that, that uh, Kate Hamilton came up with these three documents that I included in the council packet. Um, one from 2010, which is guidelines for commissions, committees, and boards. Uh, one from 2006 by Karen, which is the process for appointing members to council commissions and boards. And then a resolution from 2002 regarding attendance on commissions and um, dismissal of commission members if they miss a certain number of meetings. So one question was, <clears throat> are these um, documents still, do we consider these documents to still be in effect? That's one question. Regardless, I think they all bring up pieces of um, information that would be good to have included to update and include, uh, as council agrees, within the, the more recent documents. Uh, the, I will say flat out from the, this one that I wrote on June from 2006, um, I'm sure that was never codified. I, mean, I don't think there's any legislation that codified it. So um, I would say that that was just you know a recommendation put forward. Um, it certainly looks like it's pretty complicated. I don't know. You know, I'm not I'm not sure how how much of that is being done or needs to be done but like you say it's it's at least a good a good starting point for discussion I thought we did use that as a reference the one I, I know the one we did not was the you know the resolution about attendance um, but the other two documents look really familiar to me and, and also seem to I, I mean a lot of that we do talk about in the current legislation not to say that you know we couldn't add a few more things well, I did point out that there are a few things that I think need to be addressed. One, for just simply um, uh, saying what the role of a treasurer on a commission is. We don't do that, but that's a critical piece if there is a treasurer. Um, I think that I would like to revisit um, the removal of a commission member because sometimes that may be necessary and it would be nice to have some wording about that. Um, so I've listed other things, but I, what I'm suggesting is that uh, I get together with another council member to review these older documents along with our current documents and come back to council with a recommendation or recommendations. So one thing that, that you mentioned, Marianne, in, in your document about things that needed to change is that the language about, what does it say, directing and supervising that that hadn't been changed, but is that true, Judy? No, you, you folks did speak about that at some length. And it's yeah, and we did change it, right? You did. I mean, I. It, but you sort it's of. It's not in the. It doesn't come up apparently in the legislation that we can, we've retrieved. When does when do those ordinances go into uh, whatever they it's called? They have been codified. Okay, so, so they're there's... already on online there. Mm -hmm. Hmm, okay. So we'll have to check. But that sh that should have been changed for sure, because I know we, we talked about it and that's well, what we voted well, on. Well, um, at the HRC meeting, when at, at our retreat, when we wanted to have that legislation because we were talking about process and we got it, Patty, we had a hard time finding it, but we got it. It was not included in that language. I'm not sure where how Patty got it. Well, Judy, you had get, submitted a document, but that was just sort of the blanket resolution approving the commission change. The actual wording, when we you're talking about the ordinances themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't you'd have to look at the ordinances. I mean that they came under great scrutiny. I can't imagine that what is in those ordinances is not what you had. Well, asked either it is, it either is or isn't. So that we should be able to figure that out. Yeah. Um, I had a question relative to um, 
the interview process um, because I was kind of surprised I'm the backup to the Planning Commission, but I didn't know about the, um, the uh, when uh, Chris put her name forward um, that it happened. I wasn't included in the inter interview and I wasn't sure is that something that we're no longer doing or, you know, I guess I expected as the backup that I would have been included in that process, so I guess I'm asking Jerry that question. Because <laughs> it says here, two council members interview as well, I recall in the past, that's the way it, it had been when I was on the council. So I don't know how, um, who decides who the, who's interviewing. I'm assuming it's the liaison. Uh, I, I took it from what I got from, from Judith that it was myself and Matt being it. Uh, so that's, okay. that, that's what, well, that's what we did. So, what it says here, what it says you know. here is interviewed by two members of council. Well, and planning commission and BZA are, really are differently, differently done, done, done that's what I thought. the other boards and commissions. Um, and where does that, where, where does that, how do we know, I mean, is that That's been down discussed at length, that they, those two commissions didn't have all of the changes to their language, did they? We did not change those they ordinances. No, we didn't. But, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure you know, I, I don't know that we ever talked about, you know, what, what happens. I think when the other uh, new members to Planning Commission were nominated, uh, that did involve Jerry and Lori interviewing them. But it's not codified, as opposed to our other commissions, it is. We and specifically, you know, say that we're, we're doing that. And I think the reason I was called, because Matt wasn't there. The chair wasn't available. Hmm. No, he, so, he did the interview as well. And so, but, but no, not this time. I'm talking. I think I think Jerry's meeting in the past. Yeah, when Rose. Oh, oh, oh! I see. Uh, I understand. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the others. So how is it? Is there a way it's supposed to be? Or? I mean, it probably doesn't matter. I mean, I would say that there probably isn't any reason why two two council members, the 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 actual member and the alternate shouldn't or couldn't be involved in the interview and then I think in the case of Planning Commission and BZA the chair also I think it probably makes sense in those two for yeah. the chair uh, you know there there is absolutely no reason why why both council members couldn't be involved but I was just I, I, I thought it was maybe an oversight but I when I was reading through this I um, saw where it said about two members of council so I thought well I'll bring it up tonight mm -hmm. um, some other things, I, you know, I know it's been brought up before about whether there should even be a treasurer position, uh, and this was kind of with the idea that um, that our finance director is that treasurer. Um, so I, I think maybe if we are going to discuss that, that may be something to look at: is you know whether a treasurer role is needed on for a commission. And then the other thing that occurs to me is if there's lack of clarity about how the role that alternates play, that all comes from planning commission language. So it seems that we would need to address it at that well, level. I mean, it's not clear. Right, and the reason for planning commission <coughs> language, and I believe this is this is um, required. This came up with with another situation a couple of years ago with planning commission is that a planning commission member has to hear all of the discussion of anything that they vote on. So that ended up happening with Jerry on the Antioch College um, solar array. Lori was, wasn't able to be at the first meeting, so Jerry sat in and then he had to continue um, that to that vote. I think there were two or three more meetings. So um, that one, I, you know, I would think that the same thing would hold true if there were pretty intense discussions at other you know, it's it's different because of the legal requirement of planning commission. It, it is different. I don't know. I mean, you know, it's been so long since I've been on. Well, I'm you know, I go to the the economic sustainability commission meetings, but I mean, we all know how difficult it can be if somebody's come into a discussion who hasn't been involved in a discussion, and um, so I don't know. Um, and I guess when an alternate can vote and is considered in the quorum is less clear. I mean, 
I mean, if there isn't a quorum, the only time an alternate would be considered is if there isn't a quorum. An alternate, an alternate's vote would only be considered if that alternate was required to meet a quorum. But not necessarily so, because um, if, like this last meeting of planning commission, uh, one of the members was missing, so Chris, you know, uh, participated. Mm -hmm. She wasn't necessary for a quorum, but it made sense for her to participate, oh, that's, it okay. seemed to me, you know, and then she would be able to vote. Right. Do you have something Correct. to say? Well, going back to the solar array issue, uh, one of the, I think there was another alternate that had to participate, and because of the nature of that record, they were permitted to uh, watch the video from the previous uh -huh. uh, day that there was discussion. That way, as long as there's a record that someone can, that, that's reliable, like they, uh, an alternate can participate. Now, in the context of planning commission, BZA, that's a little easier to do than some of the other uh, committee and commissions that you have. Um, so. I pass that along to say that it's, it's not always a hard and fast rule that alternate has to participate within the, the original meeting if the record is adequate. Um, one last thing I wanted to uh, reiterate, I think it was mentioned before, is that under the cur current ordinances, it does allow for uh, commissions to create policies and procedures that make sense for their operations and so I would think at least in the short term if the HRC for example needs to remove a member because they're not attending that they have that purview at this point not that I don't think we should have a consistent rule but we did a lot for that yeah, I think that one is one, but I, I think that, you know, this whole alternate and voting thing, I mean, I think that whatever the policy is, whatever the, the rule is, needs to be consistent across the, across the, um, mm -hmm. Well, I think it's not clear in planning commission then, because, and, and that would be where we directly extrapolated all that from the planning commission ordinance. What's what? Well, what is not clear? The, if it's not clear, but the alternate language, that all came from what's in Planning Commission's ordinance, and then we just inserted that into all the new ones. See, um, and then in planning, we, we, we used it to, number one, when I set in, I set in for Lori, who was the council. Right. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. At the last meeting, our alternate set in because we had a space open mm -hmm. because my right. didn't show. So I assume so I would not yeah. set in right. to so replace some other uh, member right. other than you. you would, right. right. So we, right. That's this, true. Yeah, yeah. There's two different two different uh, scenarios uh, in, in that one. So yeah, I was thinking that although. Yeah. I mean, I guess it would be if, it, if an alternate's there in the meeting and they're, and they're replacing a missing member, then, they're, then they get to vote, right. and then they vote. That's I, how I, I think understand that makes it. sense, and that's yep. how I understand it, yeah. But so am I understanding the, the general understanding that if an alternate is present <coughs> but all of the regular members are present, that the alternate yeah, does right. not vote? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That, that was not clear. Okay. Yeah. I don't, and I don't. Is clear. I don't think it's clear in the way it's written. Hmm. And I mean, if I don't. Sure the treasurer thing. I, I really do agree with Brian that that um, the the word the use of the word treasurer um, makes me uncomfortable. And I would probably prefer something like what that person is really doing is is is. They're they're kind of keeping track of the projects. I mean, the only per, the only commission we have that for is is HRC, and it's basically <clears throat> to uh, keep track of the amounts of money that are going out to projects. I think that the actual financial accounting should come from the finance director, and I think that if you know if she if there is some sort of a process that that a commission member wants to do to track the projects on their own but I don't know that I think they should be called a treasurer I just think that's um, that the word treasurer can conveys the appearance that they are 
that they are making decisions related to that money and that they are that they are fiduciary that they have some kind of fiduciary responsibility to that money and I don't believe they do well so is there lang is our language in that commission that talks about it we no. just, okay. we just say if there is if, if if the commission has a budget then they will appoint a treasurer uh, that's what it says right now but I don't know if it's changed but at least for HRC the only reports of financials I ever saw came from Melissa mm -hmm. not from the treasurer uh, so I don't know if that's changed or not no that's still the case so are so are we going to change these lang the language well I mean it's not is it oh you said if it is the tr Boy, I really, you know, I gosh, I hate to go back. We just, how much time, not that long ago, we just spent a bunch of time doing two readings of every one of these ordinances to update them. Um, I mean, before we do that again, I'd like to make sure we've caught everything. I mean, let's, I don't think any of these things are so, you know, are, su are of such a concern that we have to do it immediately. You know, maybe we look at doing it next year or something, seeing how things go. You know, there are some questions and discussion related to the numbers and, you know, quorum and, you know, is, can, can CAP still exist with fewer than, um, fewer than um, five, five members. members? And so, you know, maybe, maybe we still need to be exploring and, and, and also talking about how the, the membership happens or how, how the whole interview and membership process happens. Maybe some of that language needs to be included in, in the commission, um, in in the actual um, ordinance, I don't know. I just I just hate to revisit for right. for these small things. I hate to revisit. There six is a fair amount of that language already in there okay. about how we do a point. Um, we could add more, but maybe a policy document, like as an add-on, is better than changing the ordinance. Right. Because the ordinance sets good. up the framework, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, and you could. Uh, to do what you document. will for sure, but um, add to that chapter something along the lines of, for purposes of boards of commissions, the term treasurer shall be meant to construe project manager rather than something like that could just be added to that section, and then everything that follows from that point falls under that umbrella. Just a thought. Okay, that would be. But you know, it, and and. I would agree with Brian that if there are, that that commissions do have the ability to um, remove, I, I you know I don't. What do you think? Do you think you think that would be no, say no. allowable say to remove could, people if they're for non-attendance? No, I, since they're approved by council, council would, would be the only That's person true. that can remove. You're right. You're right. You're right. Now they they could make a recommendation to council since we don't attend the meetings that such and such has not that's true. attended and then that yeah. should come through the uh, liaison the li village you know council liaison to say yeah. they'll make a recommendation yeah. for that procedure you know to say that we want to have this you yeah. missed three consecutive meetings and we could approve that I mean it's there's no I mean it's a quantitative but, thing but I think that that I think if we're going to say that 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 it needs to be absolutely hard and fast you miss three meetings, you're going to be off the commission. And I doubt anybody wants to pass that as a hard and fast rule. Well, that's if, why that's when we discussed well, it. That's why we didn't do that. Yeah. Well, it right. doesn't have to be a hard and fast rule, but it can be three unexcused. Well, but, but I but like I still that. think that I agree with Jerry. It probably does have to come back to council. I don't know of any. He's probably right that there isn't a good avenue by which. A council appointed individual is removed by people other than council. Yes. In thinking I think about that's it, that's better because you, I can Chris, imagine you it could get. I can imagine it could get, you know, personal in a way that it doesn't, you know, it, it, in a small committee like that. Um, a, another question, though, relevant. I'm sorry, and then you get to the. <laughs> Is the question about um, I think it was here somewhere about it, an alternate? Do they automatically become right um, onto the uh, <coughs> a, a member? And, and we and we did fix that language. 
And what do so we, we they decided don't? they don't, oh, they don't. automatically. Okay. Yeah, we. Because I was thinking some people might prefer to stay an alternate. If, right. If they're. Yeah, we added language, language that said that still, if they want to, they can certainly they can apply, apply yeah. but they I go through the same process. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. Thank you. My comments are I like what Brian said about maybe we can do this in the context of a policy. Uh, the other thing is there may be some rules yeah. that you want to make bright line rules like the attendance because the commission or the committee can't function without people attending and that that may not necessarily require the attendance you know, the council to participate in there's some things I think just have to be but removal should should removal should we have it set up that the that the commissions can actually vote to remove a member from the commission that we've appointed, or should should that request come back to us? Well, I, and that does, there, if the attendance issue was significant, would you want to wait to have it come back to council that extra time if the commission's meeting? In other words, there's some bright line things that are so obvious. If you're not attending, then you're not participating. But but bright line is never. I mean, if if there there was an illness or something, I there are there are just certain situations where I don't yeah. think anybody would be willing to absolutely say that. And so it, to me, if there's any discretion involved, it's probably going to have to come back to us. I do have a concern. <clears throat> I mean, I agree that having the a commission itself uh, say you're, off, you're out of here is, is not a good thing. But it could also be <clears throat> embarrassing to someone to have their name be mentioned at council well. that this person is no longer on this committee mission because they never came I guess I feel like there's a way to be discreet about it you know people have reasons sometimes where they're not able to attend any further it does not have I mean if so I think just you know and it potentially it, we could I think there's ways to I think we could include it in the consent it. agenda mm -hmm. that's a good idea mm -hmm. and, it, and it could be prefaced with a letter yeah, perhaps from the chair saying if you know you've missed it and we'll have to if you don't you know step off the commission and I would imagine most folks will just say oh right I forgot I've been busy and I will resign from the commission yeah. and without any anything becoming an issue okay anything <coughs> well um, so <coughs> I think what I'm hearing is uh, people that, well we don't want to change the legislation that we just changed at least not right now now um, I think that, that my sense is that the guidelines for commissions and committees, that 2010 document, is something that we, we want to follow that process. Mm -hmm. um, and also the process for appointment of members is, seems like that's what we're following pretty much. Um, and the question that I have is, I think Brian, you were saying that commissions should be able to make their own policies. Well, it's in the and ordinance I've, that they can make rules and procedures that you know make sense for their commission. And that was language that we didn't make up either. I mean, it was in uh, community access panels, ordinance that we revised, and several others. Um, so we carried that over. No, and they can do that without consulting. Council, is that right? I'm for that. Well, yeah, because it, the, the, it committees can find ways that they work best together, right. and they can, I don't think that needs to come back to And, and the, the Council of Asian should be yeah, there to make sure that right. they don't try to enact something that goes against even an ordinance or resolution or whatever, or against the intent of the and, commission. And we that. should see it, though. I mean, you know, in Community Access Panel, did in fact have you know a five-page document about rules and procedures it came to us every year um, with the annual report right. so we did see it and if we saw any red flags we could have caught those right. um, I, I don't disagree with uh, having these two documents that you, that you referenced Marianne I would just want to clean up the language because you know, sometimes it says camp council council rep. Sometimes it says council liaison. I just like that to all be consistent and match what the ordinance says. Um, yeah, but I agree. That's simple to do. And and note, based upon the previous discussion, 
council expectations of commissions and vice versa. Number one says commissions, committees, and board will conduct meetings with the same rules under which council operates. Right. So that's going to have to be stri yeah. stricken from right. that if we there are, are allowing um, them to create their own rules. Would, I mean, I think within the, 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 the same guidelines as, as council. In other words, they, I, I, I just can't see them putting in, in a rule that goes against something that we have. Then, then, then I, yeah. I, would, I would tend to agree with, with Jerry to tell you the truth. I, you know, I wonder if, I mean, I don't know how many think different things we're talking about. I mean, if we're talking about, you know, it, a, attendance, somebody being able to be, you know, a recommendation to remove for attendance, that seems to me that that can be across the board. I mean, I don't know why they would be having their own rules. I don't quite understand what well, those would I, be. Yeah, good. Can I just say, like, energy board. We sit around and talk, basically. Yeah. We're not, you know, it's not as formal. Robert's for rules, example. Right. We don't use Robert's we rules. We don't use Robert's rules either, even though our rules say that. Well, but, but there's a little more of a formality when people speak. They three minutes, you know, there's timing and all that kind of stuff. So we want to give people, everybody a chance to speak. But for our commit, that committee, it wouldn't make to me to formalize it like that. It doesn't need to be that. But we do make motions second and vote on things when we're voting on things that are important. I mean, we mostly do that. Um, so that I guess that's the difference. And I can imagine a committee where if there was some issue, they would decide they wanted to have a three minute rule because somebody's talking too much or you know they're having trouble keeping the discussion moving. And um, but it's not necessarily a rule, so they might adopt a rule. I guess right. that's what I would hear is the kind of rules that. that can be well, you know that latitude does exist, sort of even in the description of the Roberts yeah. rules. I think that latitude is there, and I feel like this mm, has presented some problems in the past with people interpreting. I think interpreting that stipulation of being able to make your own policies, it, it has tended to intrude on Sunshine Law. Kind of in a big way. But I, I mean I, I would lean more Jerry's direction in terms of keeping it on the stricter side and then the the policy shifts about how you want to run your meeting, I think there's a lot of latitude for that anyway. Within yeah. the Sunshine Law stricture. So yeah. so maybe um, Mary Ann and, and Judy can take these two documents. I mean it seems to me like these two doc these three documents that you included um, and, and I would guess this resolution is still in force, but um, I'm not sure how that would be in, integrated. But maybe take these two documents and integrate them into one and kind of clean up the language, as Brian said. Or if, if Brian wants to do that, I, you know, whoever wants to do that, but it seems like that's maybe the next step. You're talking about Judy Kenyon? Yes. Okay. Can I add something, please? Sure. Um, I think if, if someone emails the day of a meeting and says, I'm not going to be there tonight, that's one thing. But if someone just stops showing up, I think it has two effects. One, it, it, it lowers the energy in the room that night because you don't know what's going to happen. And number two, it puts more burden on people who are there because they, they have to take up the slack. So I'm an advocate for some kind of clarity of language that would stipulate the expectations of a commission member. You know, something else that would, would work to go into this is this idea we've been talking about or how we're, what our requirements are for Sunshine Law. And I know that that's in the roles and responsibilities, but we've also been talking about, you know, maybe we will have a, a Saturday session or something like that. So it would be nice to have, um, you know, to have these, to have that integrated into this too. And also conflict of interest. I mean, it would be nice if somehow all those documents were coordinated together so that a commission member could get a packet and know everything that was required of them. Karen, I just have one other question, <clears throat> and, and that has to do with uh, the number of the people on, on the commission. And CAP is a good, a good example. We went through a period where we couldn't get people on, so we dropped the number because it down to three to five. Okay. Then we went through a period where we had a lot of people on, so we raised the number so that more people could technically get involved. And all CAP's back at the same example again. 
<laughs> we had a bunch of number of people drop off for various reasons, and and now we have a commission that is suspended, but it still has a key role unless it's changed in uh, with a TV and station and whatever. And and I I, I just hate to see, you know see that thing suspended because if if we don't get enough interest, then what are we going to do? You follow me? Because it's it's <coughs> it's been what a couple couple weeks now or more, and I oh, don't know. Couple, if, couple have, have you been inundated, Judy? With, with I've not the, been inundated with uh -huh. people wanting to be on the cap. So no. you know, um, I think we got a situation here that you know, depending on how important we feel that commission is, is to to. Uh, Make some flexibility or something to get it back, you know, because there, apparently there are at least three people who want to want to do something, but they're they're prohibited. Other than to sit around and talk, you know. They, so. Yeah, I mean the flip side of that, and it's I think what John raised in his presentation just now is, you know, when you only do have a few people, and you know there's. And there's all that work to do. I don't know. I mean, it, honestly, I think with you know something like the station, um, if if there are some roles that need to be filled, then that arguably comes under Patty's purview or something okay. like so that. Okay. So I mean, if, I mean, if know, we're comfortable with the commission not functioning, but uh, you know, uh, it, it 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 seemed to, to play a real important role mm -hmm. up until we. We found that there might be some um, some conflicts, so some members had to, to drop off, and for some other reasons, is it now not important because these members dropped off, or you know, because mm -hmm. it appeared to be, you know, a real active commission doing great things. Well, to me, uh, in this regard, it. It seemed like the people who were the three people, I guess, that's still on, they wanted to continue. As far as I'm concerned, if people want to keep working and uh, until and if there are more people, I don't see why we should disband the commission, which is a different thing than if the energy starts going down and down and people drop mm -hmm. off and it's not doing anything. That's a distinction. Or if um, the, the commission doesn't have enough people and the people on it feel like they can't continue. That's another situation. But as long as people want to continue, I, right. I, I can't. Well, see, and and I, don't think we can't. Ever, I don't think we ever said that they can't. No, I mean, in no, fact, no, there were, uh, Gary if, and Tim are still helping. Yeah, if, if I read the newspaper right, it, it said we had a uh, cap had been suspended. No, that's not uh, what was said at all. It, it, it said the meetings were suspended. Is, is what it's saying. That's in the right in the ads in the ad that says here are the meetings for this week. That's what it says because that's a, that's a choice that CAP made to do that rather than continue the burden of weekly meet or monthly meetings at this point. But that that was a CAP decision, not a. Or a so it shouldn't know, have. It's, but it, it shouldn't have been in the announcement or what? It should because otherwise, if you thought there was going to be a meeting, you'd okay. be wrong. Okay, so that was the announcement mm -hmm. for the meeting. Correct. Okay, I'm just clarification. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, but Tim and Jordan are still uh, supporting Susan and you know filling that role. Uh, but but yeah, I'll be honest because I am that third person to have a monthly meeting and we don't have a secretary and we have to continue to announce those meetings and and we have three people. I'm not going to advocate for that. Okay. So, um, well, but I like the idea of still working together, and, and Tim and Jordan are great, but I, I think that's a lot of work to expect for three people. Well, so. and, I, and I, I mean, there is a reason that there's that bottom number, and I think when you've got a commission that's doing good things and, and council's thinking, this is great, they're really clicking, things are happening well, that's wonderful, but if you then change it up and say that bottom number doesn't matter and you have a commission that is not doing great things that you are not entirely in agree with and you have two good friends or three good friends who now are not folks that you might 
be in general agreement with, now you don't have enough people to balance out the, the folks who are just sort of having a small group of friends make decisions about something fairly major. I mean, I think there is a reason that there's a minimum number of boards and commissions, and you have to look very carefully at whether you're going to enforce that or not. Just it not be it based on one particular group, but across the board, is this something we're completely comfortable with at all times? Mm -hmm. Well, um, so I guess it, I guess they just they made the decision to not meet. So I mean, at this point, until I guess until there are more members, they won't they won't meet. Yeah, so. not not officially as a, as a commission. But uh, but I do agree with CAP has done great things. We'll continue to do those things, and so we need citizens to step up and support that work. Okay, are we ready to move on? Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is um, the municipal fiber work session agenda. Um, and we've got, this is just something rough. I mean, we, it's, it's generally the, the, uh, the way we do um, our agenda. Our agenda is laid out, and um, the things of importance are the items in the middle. Um, Looks fairly comprehensive. And so this was based on, I, I thought the minutes were really good in this discussion. So this just pulled out all those topics that were highlighted. I think a couple of them were probably combined. Mm -hmm. Tim, did you have a chance to look at it? No, there's one out here. Is there, is there one out there? There are. Well, it's up, it's right. Can you put it on the screen? I yeah. There are uh, full packets out there that you can, you can certainly grab. But I'll put it up. Yes. And at the at the agenda planning meeting, we actually had Melissa and, and and Judy and I discussed this: who else to invite? Because we talked about you know we, we knew that Steve said that he wanted that the school board wanted to be involved, uh -huh. and um, I thought also Miami Township might be involved. But as we talked about it. Um, this seems to be a little bit of, this seems to be primarily information gathering for us. And it may be a little soon to bring them in an official capacity. I mean, I'd like, and to do a joint meeting, I'd certainly like them all to be invited and to know about the meeting, but I don't know that I think it's the time for a joint meeting because we're basically going to be gathering information as opposed to, at, I would think, discussing um, the the project. Tim, do you want to speak a little bit yeah, about some uh, of your thoughts? We've, we've discussed this at our meetings, and we think the primary issue is the philosophical one of the validity of the construction of a municipal network, municipal fiber network for the village. And the first and foremost, it should be a village issue and decision. And then if we decide in that meeting to expand you know, our horizons a little bit and invite other parties, that may be the case. But first and foremost, we think we should be addressing our own individual needs in the village. And so I agree with what Cameron was saying. Uh, we, we need to have, have the discussion in general first about the, the whole scope of the project. Karen, I almost feel a little bit like the um, agenda is backwards. Mm -hmm. A little bit, I do, because I, to me, it's obviously a good idea, but the the question is really about financing and and risk for me anyway. Then the other stuff, if we decide, yeah, this is feasible, um, then partnership options, you know, then some of these other things, you know, getting more in depth, or maybe I mean, I'm not that they're unrelated, I suppose, but but I. I what I feel like, and I, I, I mean, I agree with you. I, we, we had a hard time figuring out this, you know, what, what made sense and order. But um, 
to me, until we understand the in engineering and construction, I think probably engineering and construction probably goes first. I mean, until we understand the engineering and construction, until staff understands what's going on, until they understand the operations, what they're going to have to provide in terms of support, until we, you know, have a handle on the cost and, and the ongoing maintenance and those kinds of things, we're not going to be able to judge. You know, we have no way of judging if it's a good thing for us to to explore. And, and just because other communities had good or bad experiences doesn't mean that we're going to have a good or bad experience. I mean, we really have to, we have to look at our situation on its own, certainly being informed by other by other experiences, um, I mean, I'm not say, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just not sure yeah, where the. Yeah. Um, I just feel like I need more facts. I think what you're you're alluding to maybe is a little bit more philosophical than. No, um, not, but I don't know how you can, philosophical. It's right, just a very it's the risk question. and. Because <laughs> it seems like a good idea. Public system sounds great to me. I'm not against that at all. Um, so philosophically, it's not a problem. If that's what you. Mean I mean, by probably public versus private. Have you thought about yeah. it, Brian? What? What? I mean, this has been more in your project. What? What are your thoughts? Um, well, I, you know, I'm assuming we're trying to keep this to two hours, and so I, I think we need data. You know, and I guess one thing that that I'm thinking about is how are some of these different topics going to be presented or discussed. Um, I mean, uh, Tim, for, from you looking from you looking at these topics, is is SpringsNet going to be able to bring the expertise on all of those, or um, do we need to be looking for? We can provide information about every topic here. Okay. Um, that we've discussed everything. Right. Brian, do you think maybe time limits might be something that you're looking for? Yeah, maybe we heavily probably, weight some right. over others? Right, and then we can see what we need to come back to. Um, so my other sense is I guess I feel like every council member kind of needs something a little bit different. So, and, and I think they're all important. So uh, I think the, the risk piece is very important. I think the financing options are very important. I imagine some council members still want to understand the benefits and, and you know really why this is a good idea, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, but you know just what are the applications? Um, so I don't know. So it, it, that I guess uh, is probably not a great solid well, answer. But I mean this I just kind of went through and did. I've got engineering and construction first, operations and support. To me, I mean to me the system itself. The, mm -hmm. the bones of the system itself that's one topic mm -hmm. but I want it but we need to understand building it maintaining it and operating it Th so those three things go together it's the system um, then um, and financing I mean that's another whole financing is another whole piece and that includes subscription rates and how much it's going to cost number of subscriptions those kinds of things and that really kind of gets into maybe more competition maybe not the risk at this point the risk can probably be pulled out that's I mean the risk is the that's that's the bottom line really is the risk it's not necessarily tied into anything else you know the case studies um, maybe can be integrated because I'm sure that some of the case studies pros and cons maybe are based upon certain of these things that are going to come out. I mean, you know, the case studies to me, I definitely, it's definitely important. And I know Judith has done some research. I've done a little bit and I intend to do more. Um, um, so, you know, I don't know how those would be integrated. I, I don't know that it necessarily makes sense that they just be this whole separate piece all by themselves. Um, but I don't know. I mean, does it, is what I'm saying make sense? Um, I kind of like the idea, what, what I heard about the case studies is if those can be integrated into some of these topics and, you know, a s couple successes and a couple failures. And why? That, and, yeah. and, you know, it could be because of the maintenance. It could be because of the, the financing. Who, who knows? You know, and that could be why. And, and I mean, Judith, do you, I know you, you looked at, at Burlington. Were there any other communities you looked at? What, well, I'm, I mean, I just read a few articles. Uh, 
I certainly don't fully understand fully understand even what they were saying, but um, but I but the, another question that comes to mind, and I don't have any idea if there's is sort of looking towards the future, looking you know projecting into the future, um, whether this is a good thing to do, you know. Maybe here and now it seems like a good thing to do, but presumably when you're going to put this kind of uh, financing and energy into a system, you want it long term to really be of great use. And with the changes in technology, right. that's where I feel like it's totally it's totally out of my depth. But I just right. have this fear and, that, and that, you know, should, yeah. that it will somehow become outdated obsolete. and obsolete, and will be because if you remember when we were on council years ago, you know we were going to do that big electric. Uh, substation. substation and that was the that was the key to um, economic development for the village and it would it would have been a big boondoggle and it, it's a huge waste of money for the village and um, and that but that's the way it was under what some people were understanding it at the time so you know this is like I say I don't really understand a lot <laughs> about fiber optics and all of that but that's kind of the fear that sort of sits, sits in the back of my mind is we don't, we, is there, you know, a way to project forward because things are changing. It feels like in that realm, things are changing so fast. Right. And that's, and that's, and I don't know if I feel like I'm not sure I can understand what, what makes sense. So, it, I mean, I, so I think we're kind of coming down to maybe really kind of two things. One is the, the, the network itself and exactly um, what it is, how it's built, how it's maintained, how it's operated. Then, and how much it costs, and then the financial piece, which would include um, subscription, subscription costs, subscription numbers, what the competition is, what the partnership options are. You know, are there partners out there? Are there are there for-profit partners we could look at? Um, are there local pro partners we could look at? You know, so that that's kind of how I'm, and we can we can work on. Let me I'll work with staff on kind of changing this around and coming up with a little bit more concise um, agenda. Um, I'd, I'd like to say I think case studies are critical, um, both things that have worked, things that haven't worked, things that have, systems that have been there for the, the longest time. But I think they're critical not just for us, or at least for me, but also for the community because this is a very new kind of thing. And we know council can talk about something for a long time and then someone will, in the community will say, what? You know, I never heard of this. So if we can have case studies and talk about other communities that have done something, I think it's a kind of education uh, for the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, I agree. And you know, how they're integrated, I, I like the idea of integrating them into into their presentation, but I mean, I will. I mean, this is really, and I hopefully this was um, um, clear from the last meeting. I mean, we're going to be kind of be getting information. You know, you you guys are going to be educating us. That's the way I see this. Is that is that SpringsNet is giving us the information that we need to kind of take the next next step forward. One piece that's that's critical that really probably isn't addressed here is what is that next step? I mean, my understanding is that there is, is that you're suggesting some sort of engineering study, some sort of further step. So I would like to know what exactly is that? How do we go about doing that? How much is it gonna cost? How long is it gonna take? And, and the piece that I was just going to say is what problem are we trying to solve? True. You know, is there a problem? Yeah, there's yeah. a problem. There and, is. and if there is, you know, articulating that well so that, you know, if we're trying to solve a problem, because if, there, if there's a big enough problem that we actually need to be trying to take on something like this, which feels a little bit to me like out of our, our depth, but I'm, you yeah. know, these, I mean, guys, these guys don't think so, so they know a lot more than I do, so. Although but I think they've articulated that pretty well, and then that's where actually where the schools come in too, because there is a piece of this that's related to the schools, but you've included that in your white paper, haven't you? Yeah, we have. Okay. And, and I might add, I was at a meeting this morning at Columbus where this subject was tackled by a lot of experts, and the projections for the usage of the internet and the devices in each and every home is off the charts. 
um, even an average person now has three, four, five devices in their home, and it's only going to grow. And I won't say a whole lot more about the need, but it was amazingly obvious to me that fiber optic is the only venue or the only method that will deliver those information, that information to the public at large. It, one other thing, I mean, there was a, there was a, a 60 Minutes on last night that talked about the fact that there is literally absolutely no security whatsoever. Um, that that any device at any time can be hacked, and I would like to understand. And, and chances are that real, that st sticks with the devices themselves. It has nothing to do with the fiber optic network. But that is, you know, that is. I would assume that you guys are. Are you addressing security or? We have. Okay. These. Uh, I think it improves the options for security when it's centrally managed within a village like this. And I can elaborate. That would be great. That would be great. Um, and then when I say when I say partnership, I mean I am interested in you know looking at what the county's doing. Look at what neighboring communities. And again, I you know maybe maybe for this particular meeting. That may be asking a little bit much, but you know, to 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 know who the potential partners could be in something like this, both both private and public. Anything else? Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks. Uh, next item on the agenda. Oh, oh, sorry. I either here or in A and B. We I am sure you do, and, and it probably will be in there. I think for this kind of a discussion and this kind of a group, it makes more sense. Um, I assume you'll have a presentation, though, right? Will you have a PowerPoint? Uh, we can. Well, we can I mean, also, we're definitely willing to do that uh, if we think that's necessary. But we think a whiteboard would also help us. Well, why don't you work with staff then to work that out? Thanks. I figure you guys are going to be able to do, you know, if, if anybody can do a big. Uh, nice presentation it's going to be you guys so <laughs> thanks um, next on a new business uh, use of funds from sale of village owned property um, Patty actually asked it's on the agenda just so I can say that Patty asked that we hold that till a time when she is here um, and but clearly we've got a couple of items on our agenda that we know um, where we're discussing village owned the sale of village owned property so it's a discussion that We'll, we'll have that on the agenda for the next meeting also. So um, to have a, a little bit more in-depth discussion. Um, Judith, oh, go ahead. Did, did, um, did we decide, though, did we actually say yes, the, the land on Cemetery Street, that that money is going into the water fund? I don't think that's been mm -hmm. decided. Okay. I think it was just something that I was. I think it was proposed, but not it decided. It was proposed, mm -hmm. I think. And I don't, I mean, it certainly doesn't need to. When, when is that transaction happening? You know, I'm not certain, but I know that Emily had asked where we were in that process. I thought, I thought I'd seen an email, but I'm not. I'm not. Well, certain. would it seem if this is what I would propose is if um, if the transaction happens in the next two weeks mm -hmm. and you have to have some place to put the money that we put it in the general fund because we can always move it from the general fund mm -hmm. to the water fund. If we put it in the water fund, we can't. We can't. Mm -hmm. We can't get it back. Um, and well, Nick, go ahead. Did you say ahead. something? Nick, I see you're here, and I'm really sorry because <laughs> you're not on the agenda. Um, that, that's okay. I, I, I appreciate that this is a conversation that should wait for Patty's return. Well, and, and we, the, um, the appraisal was late coming in. There hasn't been an opportunity to really look at it. Um, actually, we are going to have an, an executive session at the end of the meeting to discuss. It's real estate, so we're allowed to do it in executive session. But um, next meeting, <laughs> we promise. <laughs> I guess I should have told you that earlier. Sorry. <laughs> we just wanted you here. <laughs> um, Judith, the EDI landfill, just yeah. I, uh, I'm assuming if Patty didn't say it should be on, it was just there was a, the the offer is open until May 30th, and so I wasn't we, sure. You know, at the energy board meeting, it sounded I 
And, but I, then I didn't think of it when I looked at the agenda that it wasn't there until I was getting my stuff together about what we had discussed at the Energy Board, and I thought, I'm kind of surprised something wasn't on the agenda. Well, we, we would have two meetings um, since you brought it up, so can you yeah. just review I'll it just, just briefly? Explain, I'll just explain very broadly. Um, uh, AMP is, you know, has an offer for landfill gas. And it would fill the gap. It would help fill the gap uh, that we're, you know, the uh, in our portfolio that we will uh, that will be opened up by the fact that that we're giving up the gas, mm -hmm. um, the natural gas, the natural Pretty gas. Well. Yes. So, um, and I know that Patty is thinks this is a very good idea. She t said that to the Energy Board. The Energy Board looked at it. They think it's a great idea. It's, and it sounds like. Um, Johnny uh, mm -hmm. also had weighed in um, that this would be a good idea, uh, and I and I didn't really prepare to really talk about it, so I could have looked it back over. But basically, yeah, it's, it would put um, another renewable source into our portfolio. Well, and my understanding is that we currently have a landfill gas that's actually going to be dropping off soon. Personally, I love landfill gas. I mean, I I mean, to me, <laughs> if you can take that gas and Turn it in, and, mm -hmm. and it is baseload. It's methane, so it's baseload power, which the natural gas plant isn't. So I think it's I think it's great, um, yeah. and I would assume it's probably not very expensive. Um, certainly not going to be I, like hydro. I know John Courtney did weigh in on it also. So and Patty's going to have that information. I don't have it, and he I, the cost is going to be more expensive than the than our current mm -hmm. landfill gas, but it's going to be stable. Ste okay. And so his, he said over time this is going to you know be a very good deal so why don't we um say That's that we will put put it we'll have legislation we'll um suggest that if patty if patty is in agreement that we'll have legislation at the next meeting it would need to be an ordinance i believe so we would have two readings That's why I thought maybe so we, to we could do it in, we could do it in an emergency but judy could you just move forward with that yes and I know that this came from AMP coming and doing their annual um, portfolio review with us. And I was present, and Johnny was present, and so was Patty. And that's when this first came up, and this was just a few weeks ago. Okay. So, okay. Is, is there information that we can, the rest of the council can see? Oh, I'm sure. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Patty will. To the energy board because. Well, um, no, I'm saying if. Yeah. You know, if we're going to have a resolution. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Sure yeah. I mean, that's. Probably getting this. I just, it, it feels like I wanted Judith to be able to introduce it so we at least were somewhat aware of it. So for the next meeting, we'll have a complete packet of information, the ordinance and, um, and the information. I would assume even more information than that. There's usually those, the contract, we'll have the contract with AMP. Um, so that will all be in the, in the legislation. And if we choose, if we're uncomfortable, with it on that first reading we could do us do it well we could we, we don't have to vote in the first reading we could hear the first reading we can take the final vote um and the second meeting in may so i feel comfortable putting it on the agenda um okay now we're on to the manager and assistant managers reports i guess we're only doing the assistant managers reports it's just me patty took lots of nice pictures maybe she'll report on that next week she i'm sure she and uh okay. Oh. Mike had a great time. Okay, so Streetscape started along uh, Xenia Avenue Tuesday of last week. The contractor started in front of Tom's Market, and once that section is complete, then they're moving to the front of BP where they are currently, and they are slightly ahead of schedule. Um, so they're going to continue that work from BP south on Xenia Avenue to Limestone on the west side of Limestone or the west side of Xenia Avenue. Once they complete that side, then they'll move over to the east side of Xenia Avenue and they will continue work from Glen Street in front of Speedway into uh, Limestone down in front of the hotel where they're just replacing the curb on that end. But the entire projects, including the replacement of the sidewalks, curbs, street lights, and trees where they were removed. And I know that there was a lot of concern. I've gotten calls and emails about the sycamore trees that are in front of BP and um, I've been assured that they are going to remain and that lots of care is being taken um, when they are working around them. Uh, the tree committee has um, been involved and they've got the stamp of approval that everything should be okay with the sycamore trees, so there shouldn't be any concern. 
Are you done with the sidewalk? I want to say a couple things. Yeah. Okay. I want to. First of all, these guys are amazing. These sidewalk guys are amazing, and I wish they had been around for all of our other sidewalk projects. They're going so fast mm -hmm. that they're scheduling. Mm -hmm. You know, they have had perfect weather, which our past sidewalk projects have not been blessed with such perfect weather, but um, they are doing a spectacular job. They're they're confining the the work they're not you know they're not taking up a big yeah. space and they're really doing a good job of, of staging and moving moving on communicating they're doing a good job of communicating with the merchants communicating with the businesses and I also want to appreciate um, Melissa because right the day the project was starting it was realized that maybe there hadn't been enough communication about the schedule and what exactly was happening so Melissa very quickly wrote up a, a the map and and uh, a letter that she sent out and and that uh, the guys then delivered so that was good and the other thing I would like to remind citizens when you see those barricades you're not supposed to walk inside the barricades it's a construction zone which means it's dangerous and it destroys the concrete if you walk on wet concrete and that has already happened walking and or writing on mm -hmm. wet concrete is not advised and um, it w may end up not being a great situation for anybody that does it so the 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 spaces have been um, the the construction areas where there is wet concrete have been barricaded off extremely well and I really see very little excuse for anybody to be walking in or um, touching wet concrete Thank you. And then the last piece is uh, the agreements for the consulting firms for the right of way work are being worked on currently for the Safe Routes to School project. So that project should be gaining a bit of momentum once that gets off the ground. So that's all I've got. Cool. Uh, Judy. Yep, I'm throwing up a few pictures that Patty sent. Uh, to nice. Include mm -hmm. here, uh, and I had just wanted to throw out the, the topic as you go into the Boards and Commission reports, and maybe that's something that we can work on is the issue of swearing in. Um, it's something that uh, is, is less significant outside of BZA and Planning Commission, but I think is pretty darn significant within those two um, commissions, and that perhaps could be a topic to just make that consistent and that should should be no problem from my end to, to make that so if you folks agree to it okay <coughs> thank you uh, board and commission reports Jerry uh, well planning commission ha has a, a question because they weren't clear on what direction council wanted them to take if, if the, it, in terms of the uh, issues within the uh, the zoning document that was passed and, and also the, the, the comprehensive plan so so they weren't sure if if council wanted them to, to go through the, the present uh, zoning uh, that by package that we was approved and and look for inconsistencies or some of the feeling of the, of the uh, the, the planning members were uh, maybe that they should be looking at the comprehensive plan first being that some of them felt that the comprehensive plan what drives them as planning mm -hmm. and the zoning comes comes after so they they want more direction from council in terms of actually what you want want them to do well, I thought we were talking about having trying to schedule a joint meeting right. to kind of figure that out. So I mean, you know. I mean, when it comes to the to the comp or to excuse me, when it comes to the to the zoning code itself, Judith and Marianne, I think, were the were the two that had issues and were concerned and were mm -hmm. were you know looking at what I would consider substantive issues within the zoning code that they wanted to explore a lot more than just you know language things that that weren't clear or that or where there were contradictions between one section to the other I mean what they were looking at would be more much more substantive zoning code changes I had understood that you would ask them to look at the comp plan before maybe not necessarily after meeting you know just to make sure was there 
anything well the comp plan was related to the glass more to the glass farm development and okay. you know to just to make sure that and and maybe that's not even something the Planning Commission needs to look at maybe the committee or or you two you know need to just and I'm not I think it's fine I, I I don't I don't think that there is probably an issue with the comp plan related to glass farm it's just a matter of of just making sure that it you know what what the comp plan is saying right now matches kind of the direction that that we're talking about going with the glass farm well we can do that okay. yeah I I hadn't really raised anything substantive I think it was Mary Ann mm -hmm. but um, my understanding was we would meet with uh, them and if we had any substantive issues we should be bringing them to that discussion is that true well I mean but I see those do you and they might have things yeah. to say back that they've been thinking about I mean the issues that that were raised had to do with ex I, I believe I mean the, the I'm trying to remember what I heard from Barry and it, it was one was accessor allowing accessory structures in the front yard the other was um, related to when accessory structures are built in relation to the main residence correct those were the two are there others well there's the whole issue about animals uh, in the village which isn't really addressed at all well, it and, seems and that was that was purposely left out as be, being regulated under nuisance ordinances rather than through the zoning code it and it's you could add it in but I know that, that was consciously not put into the zoning code as being regulated through ordinances separate from the zoning code mm. Mm. that wasn't my memory of I think I yeah, I think I do it. recall that because I think our zoning code does say something about it not our zoning code I mean I meant the nuisance ordinances say something about it um, I'm not sure well, I haven't looked at all that, but I remember that uh, when we had the, the task force that was going over the zoning code, we never did actually get s language in there about people, chickens, especially, for mm -hmm. example. But there, there are other things. I mean, there are definitions that are not really correct, and there are definitions that should be in there, I think, that aren't in there. So, I mean. But again, that's, you know, that's, and maybe, I, I don't know, I mean, if you want to go through and, and mark it up, I, you know, I, I guess, and I guess there, some things might need, just need an explanation, you know, I guess if council would have to agree, I mean, for, for planning commission to kind of go through another more of what I would consider a rewrite, which would be adding sections that aren't there and changing sections that are there. Mm -hmm that would that direction would have to come from council and we would have to agree that we were going to direct planning commission to do that work before they would undertake it i would think is that kind of what you're saying jerry is that they i mean do they have any interest in undertaking well, well no their only question was you know what does council want us to do and then what they would look at it and, and see the, the, their, their concern was that when we said we'd have a joint meeting, they're sitting back and saying, well, what are we going to bring to the table? Because we <laughs> kind of work and make recommendations mm -hmm. to you. And if there, there aren't issues, then when we have this meeting, it's kind of going to be you, uh, council, directing to planning to, to, to do something. Because, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Yeah, we were, they were. Yeah were kind of up in the air as to, you know, this joint meeting and, uh, you know. Uh. I, I mean, I, this seems to be perhaps led by me. <laughs> I'm willing to take the zoning code and mark the things that I either would like council or planning commission to revisit and the particular things that I think need to be in there that aren't in there. Well, that's good. I mean, that's a good start then. I'd say that's a good start. And then you know some of those sounds like sound like you know they're they're either clerical you know oversight whatever that things that you could probably give to to Jerry or Denise to take or Judith to take to Planning Commission that would be very much like the things we've already done 
um, just just simple updates. I think that certainly the the two specifically that you mentioned about. I think that you know the animal one would probably require more, if, especially if we're putting a whole new section in. That would require more discussion, and the issues of accessory structures would require more discussion because there was a lot of discussion about that when it was decided yeah. that that they it go the way it went. So um, I would say it would have to you know. So do we really need a, a joint meeting? We probably right don't now? need a joint meeting yeah, at this point. Seems like okay. we don't. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we do. And if, if the comp plan, I'm, I'm a little unclear well, what it we, has. Yeah, we are going to, it, it, they, they said that comp plan uh, was, hadn't been looked at since 2010. Ten. Ten, so we so were, it's time. So we were going years. to start well, looking, that's good. looking at that's that. Good. So. Are they aware of, have they, have you ad advised them, are they aware of the work that's going to be going on on Glass Farm, that that's um, as far as, as looking at, at uh, housing development? Uh, no. Okay. I was waiting to get, you know, Okay. Uh, yeah, they're aware that, you know, something may be happening in okay. terms of Glass Farm, but they're waiting to see. The, to see what comes from, from you folks then to start in the direction and be the wrong one somewhere. You know, and, and it's not about it's not about the comp plan necessarily preventing something from happening. It's just about the comp plan keeping up and being in alignment with decisions that are being made. Um, because it is a document that um, developers will look at as they as they want as they look to come into the village to do work so um, so it sounds like we're okay so we don't need Marianne's got some work is going to do some work on the on the zoning code and um, we don't need to do a joint meeting at this point very good um, finance committee I guess there's anything for that um, no. well you got March's financial yep. mm -hmm. so. great Brian uh, yeah, so community resources, there still has not been a meeting that I've been invited to. Um, Economic Sustainability Commission, actually we were supposed to have those goals in our packet, so I will assume that they will come at the, the first meeting in May. Um, but we had a really good meeting, everyone is on track with some of the short term things that we need to work on, like uh, a micro loan or a revolving loan program, if we're going to revamp that. Um, recommendations for incentive policy and, and these really are going to be the focuses for this first year. Um, in terms of community access panel, I think we've already discussed uh, where we're at there. And uh, Arts and Culture Commission, uh, I just wanted to say the um, uh, dedication for the Village Inspiration and Design Award was really nice at the Dharma Center. Um, nice crowd there and just uh, uh, really uh, it made me realize that this is an important thing for us to be doing as a village and, and to recognize public art and uh, so yeah so I think people are really excited about it um, and otherwise I think we talked about the other high points so thank you Judith <clears throat> um, well the library Commission uh, met and they're they just are going over these little um, repairs that need to be done uh, and I think uh, I won't go over all the details but they're being very conscientious at sort of making sure um, you know things are getting completed a lot of little details oh one thing that was said is the Virginia Hamilton uh, marker that's going to be placed there is <clears throat> it got pushed back to September, September. so that's getting pushed back to, to, to September and then the Energy Board like I said they went over this uh, landfill power uh, offer and they are very much think it's a great idea and then are just trying to think forward because they work so long on the solar thing and it took so much work you know now, now they're kind of looking out there again and saying okay so now what are we going to be doing and uh, they're looking at and I know they're working with the um, resilient the resiliency okay. network and the Environmental Commission um, and thinking about you know uh, you know trying to address um, citizens about uh, conservation you know that was the beginning of the conversation how to sort of re uh, introduce ways to, to save energy great thanks Marianne uh, the mediation program has not met since the last time I reported um, and uh, I haven't I'm going to be meeting with Steve Kahn uh, quarterly so I haven't met with him the Environmental Commission we talked about last meeting um, 
the work on the um, glass farm has started and the invasive uh, Bradford pears have been chopped up. <laughs> so when you go out there, it looks very much different. So that's the first phase of that. And the Environmental Commission, as I said, is going to have a booth at Earth Day for the various projects that we're working on. HRC uh, gave out uh, three grants at its meeting, um, one to uh, two women who are putting on a series primarily, I think, for women's self-defense. Um, uh, and um, it's, uh, con it's called Community Consent Series. I think it helping women to be stronger in terms of giving or not giving consent about um, what they want done um, with their bodies, I think. Um, and um, then the second grant was for Gabrielle Seville, which I, I think- Gabrielle. Gabrielle, uh, I, I think this was a program at Antioch, mm -hmm. in association with Antioch, and uh, called Call and Response. And the money is um, to be used to help uh, people who have lo low, lower income people be able to purchase a quarterly magazine called Obsidian that is going to be um, sold and um, given away at a launch. Uh, I'm not sure when that is um, coming up soon. And the third is what it was for uh, 365 drum, dance, and drawing, which happened uh, on the 16th. Is that, is that Saturday? I think it was mm -hmm. Saturday. Um, in fact, I think I saw them outside of Mills Vaughn School. So those were the three grants. Um, we had discussions, um, talked about um, the issue about um, drugs and concern about uh, young people, accessibility for young people at one of the establishments in town. Um, I did, I, I don't remember if I mentioned at council that I did uh, talk with uh, the Miami Valley uh, Native American Council and they are interested in coming to talk with HRC about spot, uh, creating a celebration for Indigenous Peoples Day. So we're going to be inviting them. And um, that's pretty much the report for HRC. Marianne, just yeah. something related to when HRC or, or the village is sponsoring events, it'd be nice if we got those on the Facebook page and maybe even the website. Um, so I, I don't know what's the best way to facilitate that, but the, the one that you just mentioned, 365 Project, uh -huh. I, I didn't see much out there about that one. So I mean, now that we have that avenue, I'm just thinking, because HRC in particular does a lot of mm -hmm. event support. We and, and make sure we're getting our logo. I, I actually, right. I did see a, 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 a sign, a poster for the 365 drum thing. And I don't know if our logo was on there or not, but I well, just want to make sure. Yeah, that, that um, that was an event that we put on for the kids at school. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know that they had solicited mm -hmm. uh, HRC because our flyers had been made and were already mm -hmm. okay. already out. So okay, okay, that's it. Well, Brian, oh. I'd like you to help me with that. I will. I, I mean, at least get so I understand how to do. Yeah. Well, the post you did for uh, you know, Glass Farm was awesome. So I think we more stuff like that would be great. Um, Green County Regional Planning, uh, we have an executive committee meeting tomorrow and a um, regular meeting next week. Um, I don't think anything's happened since the last time I reported. Um, MBRPC, and I apologize that there were multitudes of pages. I didn't expect the entire packet to get in the electronic packet. Thank God they didn't all get printed. Um, <laughs> Uh, all that I was wanting was the green space plan, the open space plan to be put in the packet, um, which is excellent. To, green County is doing well with open space and obviously Yellow Springs is doing well. All of our, they classify things under different, under different categories, but they're, 
um, that's something that John Young actually did before he left was um, provide information to MVRPC for open space which includes um, protected land and, and that has a specific designate, designation parkland um, bike trails you know every, everything has a different designation so that map was in there uh, in the chamber I just mentioned that uh, we've got the shred it um, day on this um, on Saturday and then this Thursday we have a regular meeting it is a new meeting on Thursday and uh, lunch is provided and it will be to talk about chamber benefits the benefits of cha chamber membership and we actually are introducing a new benefit that might be of interest to people because it's a new health care plan so anybody is welcome the meeting is free and it's at here in the Bryan Center in room A and B um, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive oh, session you know what? excuse I, I, that's me that's my bad I put future agenda items after that oh yeah okay future I'm agenda sorry. items I'm sorry no, um, so next steps regarding possible purchase so that was why Nick was here um, <laughs> so we will definitely be discussing that um, we will let's review the the municipal fiber agenda Talk about the stop sign and the alley. Mm -hmm. Alleys in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And the landfill gas purchase. Yes. Right. That's legislation. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other legislation we've got through gotten? Uh, Glenning and annexation will be back next. First meeting. And that is the, what is that? Is that a resolution? Yes. Okay. And use of funds. Oh, yeah. Did we say that? Use of yeah, funds? use mm -hmm. of funds. And do we have any special reports? Any any commission reports? Or are we all done? Uh, we're all done. Yeah. Yay. Yes. Um, yeah, and I just want to, I'm going to give my apologies now for having to miss the May 2nd meeting because I have to go to work in D.C. So okay. I think I will do what Judith did and, and maybe write something about any thoughts I have. So. And I'm going to miss the May 16th meeting. I will be in Scotland. Mm. Much more will you be wearing your plaid? I'm uh, the McQueen plaid. I'm assuming. Yeah, we're going to the Island of Skye. That's where McQueen. Oh, nice. Is. Um, so, and I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss real estate with our solicitor present. So moved. Second. Hey, Wintrow. Yes. Housh. Yes. Sims. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Humphrey. Yes. Okay, thank you.